space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to discover new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Though the Enterprise's primary mission is peaceful exploration, the galaxy holds many surprises. To be prepared, we are conducting a mock battle with the USS Republic. Captain Patterson reports the Republic is in position and ready to begin, Captain. The Republic is arming weapons and raising shields. I suggest we do the same, Captain. Arming weapons. Raising shields. Scott. Captain Patterson says better luck next time, sir. Lowering shields and disarming weapons. Message coming in from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. Jim, the Enterprise is ordered to travel to Pollux 5. The natives report that alien life forms have been attacking the settlers near a mine at Mount Idol. You are to report to the High Prelate of the colony. The settlers are members of the Acolytes of the Stars sect. The description of the attackers vary but all say that the attackers resemble creatures from many Earth religions known as demons. Starfleet wants you to determine the nature of these creatures and resolve the situation without bringing harm to the colonists. Starfleet out. I advise referring to the star map and setting a course for the Pollux system, sir. Mythological term for malevolent supernatural entities in the service of the devil, common in many mythologies and religions, most notably Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Hinduism. Topic not available, Captain. Pollux 5 system. An inhabited satellite of Pollux B. Pollux 5 has lately emerged from an ice age caused by large meteor strikes. It has recently been colonized by the acolytes of the star's religious sect. The planet is home to a wide variety of plant life, but insects and other lower life forms are the only known animals. Mount Idol, a major mountain on Pollux 5, rising 5,360 meters above the planet's sea level. Acolytes, fully acolytes of the stars. Inspired by old human religions, the acolytes of the stars are a group of deists that have colonized several worlds in this quadrant. 
the acolytes prefer a relatively primitive lifestyle reminiscent of the mid-21st century Earth rural communities. Acolyte missionaries regularly assist nearby Federation worlds during times of need or disaster. Major acolyte settlements are Nicolasi on Pollux 5, Germania on Maddox 2, and Kentigern on Haven's World. Federation. The United Federation of Planets, a body devoted to galactic peace and cultural and scientific advancement. USS Enterprise. Federation Constitution Class Starship. Currently commanded by Captain James T. Kirk. On the fourth year of a five-year mission of exploration, its first officer is Mr. Spock. Its registration number is NCC-1701. Spock. Full name. Uncodable in English language. First officer of the USS Enterprise. Spock is one of the finest science officers in Starfleet and has been awarded numerous Starfleet and Federation decorations. Kirk James Full name Captain James Tiberius Kirk Current captain of the USS Enterprise The youngest captain in the history of Starfleet Captain Kirk has been decorated many times and is considered one of Starfleet's best officers and a superb military commander. Uhura. Full name. Lieutenant Niota Uhura. Lieutenant Uhura is the chief communications officer of the USS Enterprise. Uhura is fourth in command of the Enterprise and is considered an expert computer analyst specializing in communications equipment and linguistics. Daystrom, Richard, widely considered the father of modern artificial intelligence, Dr. Daystrom is a legend in the world of computing. His duotronic circuits won him great acclaim. His multitronic experiments were less successful. Sulu, Hikaru, full name, Lieutenant Hikaru Sulu, chief helmsman of the USS Enterprise. Solo is considered one of the most capable officers in Starfleet. Hikaru graduated near the top of his class at the Academy and is considered an excellent military tactician. Topic not available, Captain. Scott Montgomery. Full name, Lieutenant Commander Montgomery Scott. Chief Engineer of the USS Enterprise. Montgomery Scott is one of the most respected engineers in Starfleet and has published numerous papers on Starship engineering. Scott is considered the foremost expert on the engine systems of the Constitution class Starships. Constitution class. The largest class of Starship in the Federation. Starship. A spacefaring craft that travels between star systems. The Federation has thousands of licensed starships, the largest of which are the Constitution-class starships of Starfleet. Topic no Acolytes. Fully acolytes of the stars. Inspired by old human religions, the acolytes of the stars are a group of deists that have... Topic not available, Captain. Robert Engevin. Fully. High Prelate Robert Everett Engevin. As High Prelate of the Acolytes of the Stars, see Acolytes. On Nicolasi, Robert Engevin serves as political and spiritual leader for that religious colony. Engevin is the acting Federation contact on that world and is considered by Federation diplomats to be a fair and capable leader. Nicolasi, chief colony of the Acolytes of the Star's religious sect with over 1,000 members. Nicolasi is isolationist by Federation standards. 
but has assisted disaster relief teams and geologic surveys. It is led by Robert Angevin. We have arrived at Pollux 5. Better in standard orbit. Pollux 5 has recently emerged from an ice age, sir. It's spring at the moment. Cool, but tolerable. Sensors indicate previously documented flora and fauna. Nothing unusual. Message from High Prelate Robert Angevin, sir. Welcome, Enterprise. The High Prelate awaits you. Please, beam down and meet with him. Spark, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. This is so much better, gentlefolk. We are honored at your presence and hope you will find peace here in our haven. Captain, the flora on this planet is very interesting. I wonder how useful it may be for medicinal purposes. On the other side of the trees is Idle Mountain, a tall, forbidding place. You have a vague feeling of danger. Various bushes and shrubs grow along the edge of the forest. Remnants of a recent snowfall cover the ground. A quickly constructed Spartan shelter, primarily used by fledgling colonies. James Tiberius Kirk, captain of the Enterprise. He's always happy to run an errand of mercy. Dr. Leonard McCoy, the finest doctor in Starfleet, wishes that he were on a warmer planet. Anson Everts, who has never been this close to snow before in his life, gazes with childlike fascination at the ground. Spock raises an eyebrow. There's nothing there requiring a ship's doctor. Nothing to report, Captain. High Prelate Angiven waits patiently for you to decide what you will do next. This planet's as beautiful as everyone says it is. The trees, the fresh air, the freezing cold. Come on, Bones, the cold will improve your circulation. Some people get too much circulation. I don't know if the problem is real, the result of a new illness, or mass hysteria. But at the very least, there's an injured miner who needs my help. Doctor, you need to investigate the possibility of disease, mental or physical, among these people, before we go chasing up the mountains. Prelate and given, may we see those who have encountered the demons? They are already gathered in the chapel, and will cooperate in any way with you, first or on my right. I've never seen snow like this before. This is great. You mean you've never built a snowman, Ensign? I've never even thrown a snowball. Do you think anyone would mind? Well... Later, Ensign, we have work to do. Of course, sir. Captain, demons and supernatural creatures are, almost by definition, illogical. Yet, it is evident these people believe what they have seen. Barring illness or mass hysteria, I agree that a real problem seems to exist.